I made a really big mistake that I was not expecting to make at all. In just a moment, I'm gonna take this little remote right here to open up the chicken coop for the very first time because last night, just before it got dark, I put the chickens in here. So today's the first day they're gonna have access to the outdoors. If you have ever raised chickens, you're gonna know exactly why this is a really great day for chicken owners. It's like the Christmas morning of owning chickens. There's a lot of good times to have chickens. The first time they start laying eggs, the first time you get them from the hatchery and they're cute and yellow and fluffy and chirp, chirp, chirpy and stuff. My favorite day though, for me, is letting them outside for the first time. It means that they're out in fresh air, they're doing what chickens were created to do. Before I put the chicks in there last night though, I made sure I had the coop all set up. I had their food ready and leveled out. I had their water. I had everything ready to go, the mulch inside the coop so that they were safe and ready to go for their very first night. And we'll talk about why I put them in there at night rather than just putting them out into the run during the day. Here's the remote. Let's open it up. Pretty curious for them to walk down that ramp right there. I would be pretty surprised if they do anytime soon. Let me just talk to you about the current setup I have right here. So I'm standing outside of our large chicken run right here. This is gonna be the place where they're gonna be most of the time, which is adjacent to our garden. But behind me, I have a small chicken run that I created just yesterday to confine them to a little bit less space. In my opinion, the reason why you want less space when you first let them outside is because young chickens are not too predator savvy. That means they're not constantly looking out for predators. I'm talking more about aerial predators like hawks, owls, and eagles, which we have a lot of. That one's getting pretty brave. See that? Really curious while coming outside. Wants to. Hopefully I can get this on film. I don't know if it's getting pushed behind by the other chickens that are curious. I didn't get that in camera, but this one got bumped out by the other ones behind it. As you can see, I'll just keep doing the tour. As you can see, we've got the feed there, the water over here. It's elevated off the ground so we don't have a mess. What I have is a lean-to built over here with posts. These posts are literally just from a tree uh, that I cut in another spot in our property. Uh, just to save money on posts and things, I have them, so why not use them? So this confined area, you can see the larger chicken run back there, it goes back there where that green post is over here. It's a much, much larger space. I'll make sense of all of this later on. I'm gonna do a complete chicken coop tour, a complete chicken run tour, how it helps our garden and vice versa. Later videos, I just wanna show you this little chicken run. I do this because I don't want them to be way over there in a corner when there's a hawk. I like that we have an overhang here. They still get fresh air. They can go underneath the coop for safety. Of course, we have this right here, which is just older used roofing to confine them in this little area, which is about 60 square feet, I believe. It's about five feet wide. That's how wide these posts are. About 12 feet long from this back corner over here to where you can see them meet up with these, this tree or this, this post that I cut and set in there. Then I've got this lean-to over here to protect them, not only from the weather, but also from predators because when they're young, they're not too bright. Again, I've got the feeder over here. I put the feeder on top of two little blocks just to keep it elevated from sinking down. The water I normally do too, but they're small yet. Oh, here they come. There's a couple of them. They're small yet, and they'd have trouble reaching the water if I elevate it too high. And last night was the first night I put them in the coop. The reason why you put them in at night is because they're easier to deal with when it's dark. The other reason why you do that is because if they sleep successfully one night, in a coop or in a in a place where they feel safe they're going to want to go back in there the next day so you're, you're kind of coop training them is basically what you are doing by putting them in there just before it gets dark let's talk about this netting this is premier one poultry netting it's just a 50 foot section of it we used to do pastured poultry on grass where we would give them a lot of access but still confine them to these nets and it worked really well but because we use this leaf mulch as compost for our garden, which is right over there. We need to keep them in a confined area. Nothing wrong with doing pastured poultry. Actually, I think it's one of the best ways to have egg layers. This is what the net's for. It's, it's very mobile, super light. You wind it up, it's into the ground there with the peg, and then you just tie it off to the fence over there just to confine them in this little area for now. And if you've watched our previous videos, 
from this series, we went from inside the house in a small brooder, which actually is this exact fire ring right here. This is a composting thing I'm doing this summer with the chickens. I'll explain that in some other video. Then I move them outside where it's colder and but not too cold because it's in our garage and they're out of the weather. And then they were in that, which is 32 square feet, a uh, chicken tractor. And then I moved them to this, which is 60 square feet, where they have the option to go inside or outside. And 60 square feet, including the space underneath the coop. The coop is two feet high underneath there, so they can roam around in there if they want. This poultry net right here is electric, but I don't have it plugged into anything. So basically, once they're out of the coop, they've got this area over here, then they can go underneath or they can go back in the coop if they would like to. She's really unsure of herself because she's in unfamiliar territory and she doesn't have her little buddies with her right now. Another thing I made sure of is to make sure the sun starts getting high. I did not let this door open at daybreak. I wanted to make sure the sun would get high so it would warm up a little bit and then eventually the sun will come down and heat up this area so they're warmer as well. It gets cold at night down to the high 30s or low 40s and then during the day, oh, another one came down. This Delaware just kind of flew down. They're not walking down the ramp. They haven't figured that out. They're kind of just jumping down. But, and then at, at night, it gets to like the low 40s. And then, oh, there's another one. And then during the day, it can get anywhere up to 70 or just remain in the high 40s or 50s. But inside the coop there, with the bedding and the body heat from all the other chicks, I imagine it stays pretty constant. So when would I recommend people putting their chickens outside for the first time? It depends on two things, mainly the age of the chickens and then where you live, AKA the temperature. So we've had cold springs before where I wouldn't be able to do this till almost June. We've had warm springs where you could almost do this two weeks before I'm doing it now. So you have to check the temperature. I check the extended forecast, the night lows. If the nightly lows are in the 40s, but the daily highs are in the 50s and 60s, I would put, this is just me and my experience of the chickens we've raised here, we've never had a problem doing this before, I would put them out at about the age of six weeks if you have a confined space like this where it's going to hold in a little heat. Now, if they're on the ground in chicken tractors and things, it's not going to hold a lot of heat. They're going to get a lot of that ground cool air. I made a really big mistake that I was not expecting to make at all. Let me show you what I did. You may see some cardboard right there. And something that's even more difficult to see is this chicken wire right here. It's 24 inches high. It extends from that post there back to the coop. If we move around to the back side, I've got this black plastic type of netting and fencing. I can't remember what it's called, but it looks like this. And I purchased this a long time ago. I just happen to have enough where it reaches from the coop up to this post right here. And you also see that there's cardboard over there. So this morning after the chickens all came out and they were getting used to their feeder and their water and their area, kind of checking things out and just being curious as chickens are, I noticed that after one jumped out through this poultry netting, I'll explain how that happened in a little bit, they all started to jump out. You would come out every you know, half hour, I'd check on them, at least for the morning. And I would see that there were two, three, four, or five of them out in this main area of the run where I don't want them. I don't want them getting picked off by a hawk or an eagle or whatever. I want them to stay in here where they're a little bit more protected, at least for the next few weeks. They would get scared or curious and they would jump through the section of the netting. If you don't know anything about poultry netting, it's small at the bottom like this. I don't know what that is, two inches wide by maybe two inches tall up here. But then here, the next section up from the bottom, it's two inches wide by maybe three or four inches tall right here. I don't know the exact measurements. Is they would jump like that bird just did. It would jump toward me because they got scared and chickens go in whatever direction they're facing. It's four feet high by the way at the top. But what they were doing is they were jumping into this section or this section, which isn't too high. It's about six inches above the floor here. 
let's say it's two inches by four inches. Well, my perimeter fence is two inches by four inches, and I don't believe they can go through there. The difference between that field fencing right there, which I have all around this entire run here, compost and everything, the difference is that when they go on here, they can widen this out. Once they get their head and body through here and they start going through, this widens out, it opens up a little bit, and they can easily get through because of how flexible this is. It's not a huge deal, like I said, because once they get out, you know, obviously I have the gate closed, they're just in this larger chicken run right here. And they're just walking around, not doing anything, not trying to escape, and most of the time they actually just end up going back in and getting water, food, seeing their friends or whatever. I'll be the first to admit that the cardboard there and the chicken wire and that plastic fencing, I can't remember what that's called. I know it's not great, it's ugly, but it keeps the chicks in here and that's the idea. Obviously cardboard is not predator proof. When you only have to be out here for two or three more weeks where they're confined to this smaller area here, that's not a big deal because in a couple of weeks, they're gonna have access to everything out here. And again, I'm gonna give you a very in-depth tour why all of these things exist the way they do. On the back side here, I did forget to explain that this is just an old gate we use on our old chicken run for the past several years that I happened to save, it was back by my garage, and I just said, hey, I'll put that on the front here. Obviously, it's too big, but it'll keep them from jumping out this way. And whenever we have an issue like this, my first instinct is always, gotta go to the store and get the right material. Gotta go get something else. Gotta put different fencing in. This setup right here is only meant to be for a couple weeks. They're gonna outgrow this, obviously. You want them to utilize this entire thing to create compost for the garden over there. Please remember to subscribe if you like this type of content of practical, down-to-earth homesteading. It does help spread the word to other like-minded people like yourselves. Take care.